Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Basic Fundamentals for the F-14 Tomcat. That's right, folks. We are back. Um, had a, quite a few different projects going, still do, so there's a lot of content to come in a couple different areas, but I figured it was time to get back into the uh, Tomcat, and what a better way to do it than to talk about the ACM and the Tomcat, or air combat modes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit and get after it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and talk about some controls that you're going to want to have bound. The first one's being right up here at the top. You're going to want this ACM cover closed and ACM cover open or the ACM cover toggle, whichever one you choose. This will the toggle one button will flip the cover up and down. And then obviously these are self-explanatory. OK, next one's going to be the PLM or pilot lock on mode button. Now, this is going to be a button that you're going to have to hold in order to use. OK, um, in a quick hand basket, basically what happens is we put the target in front of us. We hold our PLM button down and then once we get radar acquisition we're, we're clear to let go but you do need to be able to hold this button moving on we have the target designate down or VSL vertical scan lock on low target designate up vertical scan lock on high target designate forward or pilot automatic lock on okay so let's make sure that we get all of those bound as you're going to definitely want these handy um, with very rapid access if you ever need them okay now, coming into the sim, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my weapon systems here so that way you guys can see all in action. We will go ahead and bring our master arm up, get it out of the way. And right off the bat, here's the ACM cover switch. Let's go ahead and flip it up. And let's pause for a minute and see what we just got. Okay, so a couple things the ACM does. Okay, the ACM cover switch. So we bring the ACM cover up, and here's what happens. First thing is the gun rate goes to high, as high as the uh, recommended method for air-to-air -air combat. The sidewinder cooling switch and missile prep switch both come to on. And finally, the last thing that it does is, under normal circumstances, with the ACM cover down, the Phoenix and Sparrow missiles require a trigger depression of three seconds for the missile to be released. When we flip that cover up, it changes that three second counter down to one second. So pretty much as soon as you depress the trigger, the missiles will come off the rails. Okay, so real handy if you're in a tight fight and you don't have time to be messing around, you need that missile to come off as soon as you let the uh, trigger down. All right. The last thing that I want to talk about real quick is the boresight mode. So if the... Um, if we want to fire a missile into boresight mode, we will come down here to this button here, switch it to boresight. Now, boresight will require, this is for the Phoenix, okay? So I'll pause again real quick. The Phoenix missile has an active radar um, on board with inside 10 nautical miles, I believe it is, that the missile will go pit bull for um, the Tomcat. Don't quote me on the distance, I'm just going on based on uh, what we, information we've had previously. So inside of 10 nautical miles, the Phoenix will go pit bull, okay? And uh, if you want to be able to just basically put a target directly in front of you and pull the trigger and have the Phoenix track, okay? The bore sight mode is what we want to use, okay? And we'll try to take a look at that here in just a minute. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause the simulator. Go ahead and get our TID repeater on here. And let's go ahead and find us our first target. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at VSL low. So what VSL low is doing is you can see the radar seeker going up and down. And VSO scans from negative 15 degrees to positive 25 degrees from the ADL or armament data line, which is this cross right here in the center. Okay, VSL high does positive 25 degrees. So about here, all the way up to positive 55 degrees. Okay, um, so scans much further. Now with VSL high, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it now. Notice you can't see the seeker going, but trust me, it is actually moving. And we'll be able to see what that looks like here in just a minute once we uh, start engaging a bandit. Now, the first mode that we're actually going to see in action is the POW mode, okay, or pilot automatic lock on. And what that does, I'm going to go ahead and pause again for a minute here, is it will scan from negative 20 degrees to positive 20 degrees in a four bar search. Now, four bar means that it's going to go one, two, three, and four. Okay, now the advantage to the different bars is the more bars that you have in a radar search, the more thorough the search is being completed, but the longer it takes for you to, as the pilot or as the recipient of the radar contact to get that information back to you. Okay, so less bars equals a faster scan. So if there is an aircraft within its scan zone, um, you're going to pick it up significantly faster. 
Okay, but less bars equals more more holes in the radar scan, more spots that are missed by the radar. Okay, more bars equals a more thorough search. So you know um, you're going to see more of the picture, but it's going to take you longer to see that on your screen. Okay, so keep that in mind. So and, and each one does have its have its purpose. So first thing we're going to do is unpause, and we'll go ahead and hit our pal button. And there you can see it growing and boom. All right, so we automatically already caught a lock. Now the thing that I wanna warn you about with the lock. So we caught this guy out here, but let's say this guy is at 12 miles. I have no idea what his distance is currently. Uh, I'm sure we can actually find out here. Eh, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, let's say he's at 12 miles, okay? But let's say there's a guy right here that's at five miles, okay? Now this is a very likely and very possible scenario. Because with PAL, as it does its sweep, it's going to lock up in single target track the first aircraft it comes across within a scan range of 15 nautical miles. So if it starts up here and it comes down here and we lock this guy up like it did, it's not going to continue the sweep to come over here and catch this guy who's down lower and a much closer range. So it's very important when using PAL that you keep your situational awareness up. Okay, make sure that you're paying attention to the AWACS, make sure you're paying attention to your data links, make sure you're paying attention to your wingman, um, and make sure you're keeping your head out on a swivel, you know, and, and looking around because just because it locked this guy up, that does not mean he's the closest target. It means he's the, clo he's the first target within 15 miles that the radar picked up. And as soon as it picked it up, it puts it into single target track. And remember, once we go into single target track, we are no longer seeing anything else in the sky. 100% of our radar focus is now on this guy and this guy only. All right, so keep that in mind when using PAL. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and break our contact here. All right, and you can see we already picked up another one. So as I switched it, and this guy actually is closer, so that was a perfect example. As the radar was able to do the next part of the sweep, we picked up somebody else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back out a little bit here and I'm going to go into VSL low. Now this is only going to work with inside five nautical miles. So I'm going to go ahead and accelerate here, step on the gas a bit. Okay. So it dawned on me that I don't know that we've ever gone over the air to air controls. So let's also talk about the weapons here for a second. So first thing here is you're going to want to bind your Sparrow or Phoenix missiles. Now how this works is the first tap of the button you're going to Sparrow, you tap the button again and you'll select the Phoenix missiles. Okay, you're going to want your gun weapons off if preferable. I mean, obviously you want to be able to disable the weapon system and the Sidewinder missile system. Now I, I believe I had to bind these keys, um, make up these, these, uh, keyboard control so it's entirely up to you how you do it whether you bind them in the software or you know using a third-party application but make sure you have your weapons set up as well okay all right so we're coming down here I'm gonna go into my sparrows and now I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Phoenix now here I'm going to use I'm still in the pal mode now I'm gonna switch to VSL low now you can see that we locked him up okay so there's that 25 degrees top now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch the nose down to where we lose the lock. Okay. Oh, nope. Gosh, you still got him. Okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to go into VSL high. Now you can see that the cursor is gone, but if I pull up, disregard that there we go now it grabbed him okay so you can see that right about there is where we picked him up and you'll still get the diamond in your HUD it just obviously won't be over the target so keep that in mind when you're in the VSL low or VSL high even um, or excuse me VSL high or VSL low um, if they're outside the HUD range you'll get the diamond but they may be above you but if we pull up we are tracking correct. We've got a hot trigger light that you see here. This indicates that we're able to fire and there's that one second release. I squeeze the trigger missiles away. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is the PLM. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hold my PLM button, the pilot lock on button. I'm holding it, I'm holding it, I'm holding it. Turning on target and I'm gonna put him right on the ADL. Now, he may be a bit out of range, so let's check this guy right here. 
Now watch when he locks. Boom. Okay. So you notice that he locked up right about here. Okay, so picture a circle sort of going around like this, about three degrees outside the circle, give or take. Um, so it's, it's a very fine mode, okay? But as long as you're holding the button down, you can't just press it. You have to hold it until you get the target lock. Now, once we got our acquisition, we can unpause, let go of the missile. And that one did not track, so let's let go of another one. There we go. That one's going after him. And I turned the labels on. I'm hoping you guys can see. I'm hoping that's helping. It's one of the drags about recording in 4K, because we don't always get the best option here. Okay. So with the ACM switch down, notice I wasn't able to put it back into normal mode. So bring the ACM switch up, and now we're back into bore set. That's the other thing that bringing the switch up does. So forgive me if I was a little off on that one. So we've got our lock again and missile away. And that was with VSL low. All right, and splash again. So guys, that is the basic gist for the ACM modes available to the pilot. Now, remember that anything that the pilot does will always override the Rio. So any of these ACM modes, any of your VSL low, your VSL high, your PAL button, your PLM button, they will all override the pilot or the uh, Rio's lock on. Whatever the Rio is doing with the radar, any of these uh, um, functions that we've gone over today will override the Rio, okay? It doesn't matter if it's human or Jester back there. Um, as long as we are in uh, control, we take it, okay? So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it uh, gave you a, a good glimpse of how to begin the world of air-to-air -air combat in a merged fight. Now, remember the PAL button, 15 nautical miles range. The other two for VSL low, VSL high, and the um, PLM button is five nautical miles. Uh, remember the PLM button, you have to hold it down. You have a three degree approximate circle around the uh, ADL, the armament data line, datum line um, that you have to put your, your aircraft into in order to lock them up. Make sure you hold that PLM button down. The PAL button, remember, does a four bar sweep from top to bottom, 20 degrees positive, 20 degrees negative. Remember that it will not necessarily lock on the target that's closest to you. Gosh, guys, make sure you really focus on that one because it will bite you, especially in a multiplayer environment. Um, the other thing I want you guys to be aware of at 15 nautical miles um, is closure rate. Okay, if you have Bennett's that are coming at you, 15 nautical miles, if you're doing 500 knots and the enemy is coming at you at about 500 knots, you've got 1,000 knots closure, which means you have just over, and I'm going to talk in like a minute and three seconds before you're on top of each other. Okay, so it's really not a lot of time. So again, use it wisely. Make sure you keep your head on a swivel. And uh, as usual, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications of future content and uh this is overkill i'll catch you guys next time